The four-year-long American Civil War from 1861 to 1865 profoundly shaped the modern United States democracy. It resulted in the loss of 750,000 soldiers but secured the abolition of slavery and restoration of national unity. As with any intense combat, it also left a footprint of unresolved questions and hidden secrets. Here are five intriguing mysteries from the American Civil War. Number five, Fort Monroe. Fort Monroe was one of the few southern forts that remained in government hands and was never captured by the South during the Civil War, despite being surrounded by Confederate territory. The castle-like structure with its moat and massive walls is reputed to accommodate many eminent ghosts, as it seems to be haunted by nearly every important person who ever visited it. The spectre of President Abraham Lincoln, who is known to also haunt many other places, has been seen in the guest room, which is now called the Lincoln Room. He's always wearing a dressing gown and studying papers related to matters of state. Also visiting quarters number one is the apparition of the tough General Ulysses S. Grant. The Confederate leader Jefferson Davis was imprisoned at Fort Monroe after being falsely accused of planning the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. During his stay, he was taken for evening walks along the ramparts, and his wife Verena was able to assist him from a nearby house to ensure he was still well. Davis's ghost is still seen walking the ramparts by night, and the window in the house where Verena stayed is said to vibrate with her presence. Even the spirit of author Edgar Allan Poe, who briefly served as a sergeant major of artillery at the fort, has been spotted in his top hat on the balcony of the Chamberlain Hotel inside the fort. However, the best known of Fort Monroe's ghosts is not a famous person at all. An area called Ghost Alley is said to be haunted by the White Lady, who roams around Fort Monroe in search of a lost love. She is said to be the wife of an objectionable captain who neglected her and lost her life at his hands when found with a young soldier she had befriended. She roams the fort in a white nightdress surrounded by an eerie glowing mist. There are many other stories from Fort Monroe. Spectral sightings around the fort have been reported for a long time, often by military staff with sound reputations and seem to have become common. In one recent but ongoing haunting, a couple happily coexist with a young family waiting for their soldier to return home. They have seen a woman in a maroon Victorian era dress tending a crib and hear disembodied footsteps and voices. Even their initially scared pets have adapted to the sharing arrangement. Number four, General Grant's photograph. A unique and famous image from the Civil War survives, which is a landscape photographic portrait entitled General Grant at City Point. It shows Ulysses S. Grant, commanding general of the Union Army and later become the 18th President of the United States and is said to portray him addressing his troops from horseback at their base in City Point, Virginia. But a closer examination of the picture reveals some mystifying anomalies. Grant, a skilled equestrian, is sitting very awkwardly atop his steed, with his head twisted at a painful angle to his spine. His body appears much larger than in other pictorial records, and his uniform is oddly from a different time period, as it shows his incorrect ranking with one star instead of three on his shoulder. The horse is not one of the three he owned at the time, and even the location of the picture is not where it was claimed to be. Rather than City Point, the background of the photograph is actually the prison camp of some captured Confederate soldiers at Fisher's Hill. Detective work by the Library of Congress has revealed that the photo is a composite or montage which combines images from three separate pictures. 
Grant's head is taken from another, quite informal photo, which shows him standing in front of his tent like an ordinary soldier and leaning casually against a tree. The horse and weightier body have been appropriated from a portrait of Major General Alexander McCook. Closer examination reveals tiny scratch marks showing the cropping and physical substitution of images in this skillful fabrication. The manipulated photo with its majestic theme was found to have been assembled much later in 1902, possibly to illustrate the importance of Grant during the Civil War. It was probably used for publicity purposes in the absence of other contemporaneous pictures of the down to -earth general. Number three, Thomas W. Timberlake. Understandably, many soldiers carried mementos of loved ones when risking their lives in the armed conflict of the Civil War. When Confederate Private Thomas W. Timberlake of the 2nd Virginia Infantry was wandering through the devastated battlefield of Port Republic, he made the discovery of an Ambro-type photograph of a young girl. His dilemma was that the photo was positioned exactly between the bodies of two soldiers, one of them Confederate and the other one Union. Timberlake retrieved the poignant image as it finally found its place in the Museum of Confederacy in Richmond, Virginia. Although photography was still a relatively new process during the Civil War, the image joined many other mystery photos of many women and children in the museum's collection. The personal effects of soldiers from both sides of the war given for safekeeping were never reclaimed, most likely because their owners did not return. They depict people who are long deceased, although the museum has occasionally tracked down some of the individuals but most pictures, like that of the unidentified girl, remain intriguing shadows of a past age, never recognised or reclaimed by anyone. Number 2. Kolb's Farm The trauma of war often leaves a psychic footprint, even more so because of the emotional conflict of brother against brother, where the Civil War has left in its wake quite a few ghost stories. If you believe the legends and sightings, most major Civil War battlefields are rife with hauntings of young men not ready to pass and sometimes engaging with the living. Even a minor battle site can become notorious for ghost sightings. Colbridge Court was a small housing settlement on Cobb's farm near Marietta, Georgia. On June 22, 1864, an armed skirmish occurred that became known as the Battle of Cobb's Farm. The small scale conflict which had erupted left the area experiencing strange phenomena. The settlement survived the war and later new homes were built and new families took up residence. However, apparitions of Civil War soldiers routinely take casual strolls through these new homes and the owners of one in particular have reported extremely frightening events from a spirit who seems to have moved in. The couple have seen a strangely solid man in Civil War era clothing moving around their house. Other phenomena have included invisible hands pulling at their clothing, cold spots and most unnervingly use of their power tools when backs are turned. The guest room bell has been repeatedly rung when noon was present. Curiously, the couple realised that the ghost's behaviour was teasing in nature and were able to make peace with their Civil War spirit. They decided that the ghost was fairly shy and only started interfering when he felt neglected. Now they pay attention to their spiritual housemate, give him a free run and live with the entity in amiable coexistence. Number 1. Stonewall Jackson until recently, unanswered questions surrounded the untimely passing of Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson, the famous Confederate Lieutenant General. On a pitch black night, he and several of his troop and horses were targeted by their own side. As they returned to camp following the Battle of Chancellorsville on May 2, 1863, although Jackson and his staff gave frenzied shouts of identification, a Major John D. Barry replied with, It's a damn Yankees trick, fire! 
It was never really clear what happened on that fateful night. Conspiracy theories of deliberate foul play have multiplied, with the Jacksons' fame leading many people from both warring camps to claim that they were involved in his death. In fact, he was roughly evacuated in the fray by stretcher to a nearby plantation office building, and his left arm amputated. Due to the poor conditions, he developed undetected symptoms of pneumonia, which led to his passing eight days later. Generally, historians believe that darkness and chaos around the battlefield resulted in the friendly fire that saw Jackson's demise. However, there still remained unanswered questions. In 2013, two astronomers meticulously calculated the phases of the moon on that unfortunate night. They found that when Jackson was returning to his infantry, the moon was so dim that only the silhouettes of himself and his men would be discerned. His exhausted and terrified soldiers were probably startled by the shadows and instinctively opened fire, only to find in horror that they had downed their own commander.